So just to make it a little bit easier, you don't have to do this, but it just makes it easier to see. I'm going to introduce a substitution. Maybe you want to follow along if you're doing this question with me as well. Right? If I introduce this, then it makes it just a little bit easier to write this first line and see what to do with it. So I've got 3 plus u minus 2u squared. Okay, so now it's clear as day. We've turned a weird looking question into a question I know how to do. This is just a quadratic. I may multiply through my negative 1 because I don't like negative um, values for that first coefficient. What do I do with this? What can I do with it? What pair of numbers am I looking for? 3 and 2? No, Surely one of those has to be negative, right? 2 and minus 3. 2 and minus 3. Interestingly enough, because this number here is negative 1, the numbers are just 2 and minus 3. Anyway, what do I do with 2 and minus 3? Okay, so there's a couple of different things I could do. Um, I'm probably going to do it, let's see this. Let's go this way. 2u plus 2, 2u minus 3 on 2. This is a variety of, this is one of the variety of things that you could do. Okay. Um, you can see where I've used the 2 and the minus 3. You can see I've got 2's there and I'm divided by 2 because I want this to be a 2u squared, not a 4u squared. Um, the 2 goes into one of these. Which one? The first one, right? Just do a quick mental check. Does that check out? Does that expand back to the original thing? <clears throat> You're going to get 2u squared, aren't you? You're going to get minus 3, and then you have a look at the u's in the middle. You have a plus 2u, you have a minus 3u. Happy so far? What do I do with this? Find u and Now I can solve for u. That's why I factorized, right? So u is going to be negative 1 or... Very good. Okay. So at this point, I've solved for u. But u is just a stand-in for tangent. So at this point, I'm going to write two different equations. Right? I'm going to write this one and this one. Now, the first one has an exact value on it. The first one has an exact value. If you're lazy, you can go to your calculator. And when you put in negative one, shift 10, negative 1, you're going to get out, I'm pretty sure, negative 45 degrees. Negative 45 degrees as a teeny little catch with that solution, with negative 45 degrees. What's the catch? It's outside the domain. No big deal. That's OK. If negative 45 degrees is a solution, there it is, then I can take advantage of the fact that 10 is a periodic function, just like every other trig function. So if I go forward a certain amount, I'm going to get another solution. If I go forward a certain amount, what certain amount is that? The period of 10 is 180 degrees. So if I go forward 180, what value will that be? 135. So there's one of my solutions. That's inside the domain. But I can keep playing this trick, right? I can go forward another 180 degrees. If I go forward again, what will that take me to? What value? 350. Uh, if I add 180 to this, I'm pretty sure I get 315 degrees, right? 315. And that's also in the domain. Do you agree with that? They're both good solutions. So I'll write both of those down. That x can be 135 or 315. So that's from here. But then you've got another set of solutions that come from the second equation. Tan x is 3 or 2. That's not an exact value. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Reach for your calculator. Go ahead. Have you got a calculator there? Am I going to beat someone to it? Or are you guys going to be faster than me? Come on. Who's got 59? Someone already got it? I'm just throwing a number out. 56. Can I get minutes? 19? Just out of curiosity, what are the seconds? You, sorry, say it again. OK, great. So, sh 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 your calculator tells you this. By the way, by the way, you know how I said, oh, tan x equals negative 1, that's the exact value? I sort of got the fact that it was negative 45 because it's related to this guy. Right? 
You should remember that one. You should remember that x is 45. I know you don't need to remember it because you have a calculator, you have your reference sheet all that, but it's such a common value that you ought to go for it. Do you see that this gives you a sense check for this? Because tan x equals 3 on 2, uh, let's see here. If that's 45 degrees, there's 1, right? So tan x equals 1, tan x equals 1 will give you 45 degrees. Agree? But 3 on 2 is just a little further up, right? Here's 3 on 2. You know, it's 1 and a half, right? So when you go over, you should see, oh yeah, I should be just a little bit past 45 degrees, which sure enough is exactly what you've got. 56 degrees, 19 minutes, there's one of your solutions, but I'm going to play exactly the same trick I did before, because 10 is periodic. So I'll have another solution, namely, that plus 180, right? Which I can do in my head, that's 200, sorry, yeah, 236 and 19 minutes, yes? These your answer, uh, just to be really nice and neat, I think it will be you know, ideal at the end to tie up everything in a loose boat, in a, not a loose boat, uh, in a nice knot, and put all four of your solutions, one, two, three, four, in a row. Um, in ideal circumstances, you'd put them in ascending order, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, what does matter though is that you have everything. The reason why I put this out is because. Um, Suppose this was a different question. Instead of tans, I put sines. Okay? Just suppose. If this was the original question. Whoops. I just said sine. If this was the original question, right? Everything about the way that I just solved this question would still apply. Pretty much everything. Except that when I get down to see how I'll get rid of the, the signs, whatever, I'll replace them with use. Once I get down to here, right, my lines will just be signs instead of tans. So eventually I'll come down to this. Okay, now play this game with me again. I've got a pair of equations. I want to solve these two. So have a look at the first one. Again, there's an exact value that goes with this. Can you remember it? Okay, so my go-to, just like I've shown you before, is to either think of the graph, right? That's, I think, the easiest, or think of the unit circle. In this case, if you think of the graph, where's negative 1 on this graph? There's 1, there's negative 1. So where does this graph equal negative 1? Answer, only one spot, right there. That's 270 degrees, right? So I'm going to say x equals 270, full stop. Then you have a look at the other part, the other equation that goes with this. When is sine x equal to one and a half? Uh, we said that's one, right? So where's one and a half? It's somewhere up there, isn't it? There's three on two. When is that? When is sine x colliding with that line? It's a never. never, right? So what you get from here is no solution. Bless you. Now, at this point, I think that looks weird, right? x equals 270 degrees and then no solution? Like, which is it? And the point is, you get no solution from here, but you do get solutions from here. So therefore, I would say this, right? I've seen a lot of students, they'll, they'll write this down and they'll say, cool, I get solutions from this. They'll write this down and then they will ignore it because they go through that thought process we just went through and be like, oh, I can't solve that. And so they just don't write it down. But that's actually an important part of the process. There's, there's solutions that should come from that, but you have to ignore them because they're invalid. So this is a nice and neat way to say it, which is why I tend to write my final line, including both of or all of my branches in case there's more than two. Okay? Um, so there's the process.